So after the lofting video of the F-16 jet that we did, I had a viewer reach out to me named James, and he had an interesting question. Um, he wanted to find out if we could use a model that was created in a different format as a starting point uh, for creating a new model in Fusion 360. Uh, he shared with me a model that he purchased of this A6 intruder that was likely done in Blender. And it's a beautiful model, and there is incredible detail in this model. But you might ask, why on earth would we want to be creating a model from a model? Why can't we just use this one? Well, the problem is, is this is what you would call a manufacturing model. Um, this model is perfectly good for fabricating, for maybe 3D printing, for doing whatever, but it's not necessarily editable in the way that we would need to be able to edit a model to make a flying, workable plane. And that's what we do on this channel. For example, you can see in here, the inlets for these turbines stop, right? There's nothing there. We need this model to work. Also, if I was to uh, run and do a section cut through this, I'm going to go up here to inspect section analysis. I'm going to click this longitudinal plane and hit OK. And what do we see? We see a shell. There's no inner workings of this whatsoever. It was, it was never designed to be functional. Uh, so really, this is just a reference starting point. So then the next question is, well, can this be converted? What we're really talking about here is reverse engineering. There are some tools and Fusion 360 for doing this. Uh, when I import this model, it is an OBJ format. It's seen by Fusion 360 to be a mesh. And there's a robust tool set for editing mesh files within Fusion 360. Unfortunately, though, by their very nature, mesh files don't carry with them some of the original design geometry or math. For example, where a fusion face or solid can contain quite complex, mathematically correct organic curves that can be manipulated, what you will find in a mesh is faceted approximations. These facets can be quite small and render a model that's usable for most fabrication applications, at least at the scale of work they were originally intended for but they're very difficult to edit correctly and tie in to new geometry. For something as complex as this type of model, we need to work with a native editable format. Now, Fusion gives us some great tools to be able to extract just the amount of data we need from these types of models just for that purpose. It's worth pointing out, however, that if your goal is simply a direct conversion, Fusion will likely fail on a model this complicated and there may be better software applications more suitable for that type of work than Fusion 360. So direct conversion won't be the scope of this video. Specifically, what I'm going to talk about in this video is we're going to use forms. And in using forms, we're going to use them in such a way that we can snap our form geometry to physical uh, points on this three-dimensional model, which at first seems like a Initially, when you do this, this model really doesn't seem like you can do anything with it. It's kind of maddening. But there are tools to directly snap to that geometry and kind of create a shell over the top of this thing. A very editable shell. So, let's get started then. I'm going to go over... Well, first off, uh, I am currently not capturing design history. It's interesting to point out that the form tool appears in a different place if you are. Um, you'll have a drop-down button for it right here. If you are not, if, if I say capture design history on this model, you'll see that that goes away and instead under the solid tool tab you have the form button right here. Either way, while you're in the form creation tool, you're actually not recording history for that part anyway. So we're going to uh, click on create form here. The first thing that I'm going to talk about is face. We're going to use the face tool here. And while using the face tool, 
one of your options is that you can object snap when utilizing this tool. So what I'm going to do is come up to this front nose of this aircraft and I'm going to pick four points and it is literally snapping to the top face of this geometry. Now as I orbit this around you'll be able to see that it is on that face. So after having done that we can use other tools for example we could do another face snap again click back here and then we could use the modify bridge tool to bridge between one to the other and right here I'm gonna say select make it a single face So that's one way to do it. The next way we are going to do this is we're going to edit one of the edges. I'm going to go to the modify tool and let's just say as a different option say I want to create a new face. So as I move this I'm going to hold my alt key down and create a new tab. And let's create another new one below that. and then let's say maybe one more below that. Now I could sit here and work to try to get these placed into position as best I could but I'm going to show you a quick cheat where I'm going to double click on this entire piece and I'm going to modify and I'm going to select pull. Now you might want to assign a shortcut key to this because you will want to use this often by default there's not one. I assigned shift.p in order to do that by changing the keyboard shortcut right here. So when I click on this all of these vertices are highlighted because by default it's selecting 14 and the target selection I currently have set to auto. So it's going to snap it to the closest geometry that it could find. But let's do a little bit better than this. Let's go back to mesh for a minute. I'm going to turn this one off and I'm going to use the create mesh selection sketch tool and you'll see why in a minute. I'm going to touch on this, touch on the mesh model, then I'm going to define the plane that I want to work with and I'm going to slide this sketch tool say as close to this segment as I can. Okay, now we have a section there. I'm going to do this again about three or four more times. As they currently sit, they're not particularly usable but you'll see that we have sketches here. Now I'm going to use a tool to clean this up because see I don't want the tessellations that these section cuts just made. So I'm going to edit this tool and under create I'm going to select the option fit curves to mesh section. And then over here is really important. This is going to define, well, the, the curve type. You can do lines, arcs, or splines. You can let it use a clo closed spline, which is what we're going to do here because that's really the geometry shape. Or you can let it try to find the closest approximation of either ellipse or a circle and then path direction is either short path or long path meaning if I pick two points here it's either going to go around the short side or it's going to go all the way around the long side we'll just well we'll pick short for now uh, spline fit tolerance is how much of these deviations do you want to remove 
Um, the bigger this number is, the softer things get, but the more it may get away from your original line. So this is where you would play a little bit to decide how much resolution you want. So here I am, I'm going to pick on this object. I'm going to pick at the very top. And now I'm going to try to go to the very bottom. And at 0 0.01 millimeters, you will see that it created a beautiful curve instead of these faceted lines. Okay, we're going to do that again on the next one. Actually, we're going to speed this up because this is a lot of repetition and I don't want to bore you guys any more than I have to. All right, now that I have these defined, it would seem like we're just going to do a loft. Uh, and in fact, we are, but we're going to loft with a mesh this time. So, I mean, sorry, we're going to loft with a form this time. So now these are selectable. And they're very beautiful approximations with nice organic curves. So I'm going to go create under form. And I'm going to go to Loft, and I will touch the first one. Hang on, I will touch the first one, then the next one, then the next one, then the next one. And what you can see that we've now created is a skin over the top of this thing that's highly editable and is about as close to stealing the original geometry as you can. Now, other things that you can do with the with now that you have this done, you can see how quickly that happened since I had the reference work. I can come up here and I can control how many facets I want between my references. And in both directions. We can make more of them this way or less and you will see how the mesh tool is doing its best to keep this geometry that looks about right there. Another thing that you can um, also experiment with is instead of saying uniform you may want to say uh, I want you to go to curvature and when you go to curvature you will see that um, it focused where there was a tighter curve it focused, focused more of these lines and where there's less of a curve it focused less so that actually works quite well in this scenario so here we have the beginnings of this shape of a model now let's use a, a couple other tools to make life easy I'm going to use symmetry and I'm going to mirror duplicate I'm going to touch on that mesh that we created and I'm going to use a mirror plane right here and tell it to weld the seams and in fact it did you see the seams are welded here but we do have a problem beneath it and the fact that it's tessellated here is telling us that I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna say merge edge touch that whole run touch that whole run hit OK and now we have a beautiful shape again it's mathematically correct. So let's turn off our reference model. And if you see the reflections in this model, you'll see what beautiful shapes we have. In fact, I can come down to my display settings, change my visual style to just shaded. And that's a really beautiful form that we've been able to pull off of this model. And the crazy great thing about it is it's an editable form. If I wanted to model this, modify this, however I wanted to, we have the ability to then make changes to this model as we see fit and as we need to. So that wraps it up for these tips. James, thanks for sharing this model with me and sending me along the question. Hopefully it explains what I had done and the file that I sent back to you. If any of you have modeling questions like this specifically to designing models for RC aircraft, share them 
in the comments below. I'd be happy to take a look, see if I can't make an instructional video specifically about this topic. Now, I won't be doing any more on this model, as it's not mine to begin with, and James has some great goals of creating incredibly clean molds of this plane to fabricate composite components for a giant scale model. As for my projects, check out my ongoing 737 series and F-16 build series on my channel, or check out this next video here.